What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're gonna be breaking down how you can get faster. We're gonna be talking about how you can get faster off the line, some general gym workouts, on-field workouts that you could do to improve your speed and then how you guys can make faster cuts. So I hope this video helps you guys out. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver or a quarterback and you would like to train with us this offseason, we're gonna be traveling out to 14 more states across the country for two day long QB and wide receiver camps. Next up, we will be coming out to Orlando, Florida. That camp is completely sold out, but then we'll be coming to Phoenix, Charlotte, Dallas, the DMV, St. Louis, Honolulu, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles. So check out that very first link in the description below if you want some more information on that and how you guys can train with us this offseason. Let's get started with this video. So now, first thing I want to discuss here is how you can get faster off the line, more importantly against press coverage by using something called a prep step. So this is Chris Olave here at Ohio State, and he's using this prep step to get this DB to open up and think that he is running a fade. So anytime that I am running a fade route. So let's say, for example, I'm just trying to take this DB deep. I'm trying to run around him. When I try to run around him and I'm trying to go deep, what do you think I need to run with? Run with some speed. I need to have some burst off the line of scrimmage. So what Olave comes off the line here with is this kind of like shuffle slide release where he throws a crossover to the outside. DB jumps, thinks it's an outside release, and that opens up the slant. It could be a version of like a diamond release, which is where you attack the outside shoulder and hip, or it could be like a slide release, right? Now, either one of these, we need to have some burst and we need to have some quickness. One of the biggest things that makes wide receivers slow off the line is that they come off the line flat-footed. They'll come off the line from a position of no momentum, and then they try to go right into the release. You need to take some kind of a step, whether that might be a kick step with your back foot or a prep step with your front foot to generate some speed. Because trust me, against a disciplined DB, he is not going to bite unless we are moving with some speed. So watch what Olave does here with his front foot. He takes this almost like inside jab. I call that a prep step. Some people call that a gather step. I'm sure there are other words for it, but that is not a false step. A lot of people will get this confused. Now, if the DB's 12 yards off and we have to run, like, let's say, a comeback, and you take that kind of step, that is a false step. That is what we do not want. But this, in this case, this step right here is a part of the release. It's to generate some explosion and push so we can really threaten this DB with a vertical fade. So, fellas, to sell fade off the line, to get faster off the line, you need to set yourself up for explosion. Taking that prep step with that front foot, making sure when you take that step, it is inside your frame and you are pushing off of it, that will give you more explosion. Even if you're doing just like a simple wide step release, you could take a prep step here, push off of that cut and just throw one jab to the outside and then go. You can do the same thing. Take a prep step, throw a jab, and then throw an inside jab and take an outside release. But it gives you some balance. It gives you some explosion so you could burst into this release. Okay. So now, I talk about all that stuff, but even if you're taking that prep step, even if you're doing it correctly, some people still lack speed. So what are some different exercises or some drills that you can do to improve your speed? And that's what we're going to be talking about next. So let's play this full speed. Great job by Olave, getting this DB to move, getting to sell with some speed off the ball. So we're looking at this example here from Saquon Barkley, right? So now, obviously, this is a clip of him power cleaning a lot of weight. Now, I'm not saying you got to lift this heavy. I'm not saying that you even have to lift crazy heavy, even especially at some people's ages. But the reason why I showed this clip is because Saquon Barkley is probably one of the most explosive athletes in the NFL, right? He's a running back. He's not a receiver. He's a running back. So for all you receivers out there who want to get faster, probably a good guy to take advice from would be a running back, right? Or to do some of the things that they do. Now, he's doing power cleans. Why would he be doing power cleans? Why isn't he doing, you know, bench press? Why isn't he doing shoulder press? Why isn't he doing squats? Why isn't he just running sprints? Because being fast is all about being able to develop your fast twitch muscle fibers. So everybody's got two kinds of muscle fibers in their body. You have fast twitch fibers and you get slow twitch fibers. You have fast twitch A fibers and fast twitch B fibers as well. Now, fast twitch A is like all out effort. That's you trying to exert as much energy and as much force as possible into a movement. Kind of like how football is played. On every single snap, what are we doing? We're going 100 miles an hour. Even, and, and you will get time in between every single rep to refuel, even if you run a no huddle offense. So how you should be training is exactly like this. We don't want to be lifting like bodybuilders. I don't want to be doing curls. I don't want to be doing tri. I don't want to be doing cable extensions. I want to be doing exercises like this because this directly translates to speed and it will also help with functional strength. So we watch him do this movement. 
It's explosive movement. That is every single snap in the NFL. That is every single snap that you want to do, what you want to do. You want to try to explode and be as fast as possible. So when you're running a 40-yard dash, right? Let's think about a 40-yard dash. What's the first 10 yards? What do they call that? They call that the drive phase, right? You were trying to be as explosive as possible. So like, here, I'll draw it out here. Like, let's say this is a full 40 and let's say this is 10 yards. You were trying to be as explosive as possible for 10. So that explosion generates acceleration all the way through 40 and you hit your top speed. You don't gas out at 35. So your time's slower, right? And everybody loves to emphasize the 40 yard dash. How can I get a faster 40? I don't put a lot of stress on the 40. I think it's widely overused and not super important, but you know, Sometimes scouts pay attention to that, especially, you know, guys who are getting ready for the NFL combine, all that stuff. 40, I guess, does matter. I don't think it personally does. I would rather have you have game speed. And game speed comes from explosion. So let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way. If you're a wide receiver, let's go all the way back to this first step. How do you get a quicker prep step? How do you get more explosion off the line? Doing those types of exercises. Because what is he trying to do with that prep step? Exert all out effort. Exactly like how Barkley is lifting in the gym right now, exerting all out effort. Now, let's say, for example, maybe you're a guy who doesn't have access to a platform. Maybe you're a young guy and you don't want to lift weights yet. Totally fine. That's not, I'm not against that. And maybe you're just a guy who's looking for other exercises other than power cleans, jump squats. What else can you do? This is a great example of something called a box jump. Okay. So what's a box jump? It's where you're just ju- simply, you were trying to jump onto something, right? That's pretty simple. Jumping onto a box, jumping onto a platform, whatever it is. Now, this is a wide receiver doing this type of movement. Now he's doing this box jump. Why? To work on his explosion, right? To work on exerting all out effort because you'll be able to jump onto a box. You have to exert all out effort and you have to explode. And that is what's going to help you. That's what's going to directly translate onto the field. Now, we used to do this in high school and it was stupid how we did it. And I wish I would have known what I know now back when I was in high school because they would have us go here. They would have a box set up, but it would be a low box. And what people would do is they would just say, hey, we're on a time schedule. You got 15 minutes to get through a station with three exercises and you have to do 10 box jumps, but the box would not be high. It would not be like this. We would not need to exert all that energy. So literally there would be guys in the gym who would just jump up, jump back down, jump up, jump back down and go as fast as they can, not exerting all that effort. And it was more like a cardio workout. That's not going to get you any better on the field. It's going to get your cardio, Mike, get your cardio up, but that's not going to help you with speed. That's not going to help you with explosion. That's not going to help you with quickness. Doing exercises like this and trying to exert all out effort is what gets you that explosion and is what will help you with that burst. That's what directly translates to on-field play. So now let's talk about this in an actual route, like an actual game scenario here. Because remember, the whole purpose of lifting, so many people get this incorrect and in You're starting to see more and more of it on social media, the information that's out there. A lot of people are talking about football players should not be lifting like bodybuilders. And I agree. And I do think strength is important because you got to be strong to be able to absorb hits. I get it. But the positions that watch our channel, quarterbacks, receivers, you know, I know a lot of you guys are running backs out there. You know, running backs probably a little bit different. It's still about speed and explosion for sure. You take a lot more hits, but receivers and quarterbacks, you guys aren't taking a ton of hits. You guys should be getting better for performance-based exercises, right? So I, as a receiver, I need to focus on, yeah, some guys need to put on weight, but I need to stay fast. I need to stay explosive. So those exercises is what will directly translate. Everybody always asks me questions about how do I get faster cuts, right? And now that's a very vague question. I could give you drills to work on it for sure. I could give you a million drills to work on it. But if you're not doing the things in the gym, the exercise, that we just showed, types of exercises similar to ones that we just showed, there's going to be a cap on your potential. You're eventually going to get to the point where it's like, okay, I'm as good as I can get and I'm not getting any better because I'm not doing extra things like lifting correctly, doing box jumps, doing power cleans, doing all those explosive Olympic movements because that's what will directly translate. So let's watch how this wide receiver makes makes this play. He does this jab inside, works up, hits this speed cut, and then is able to go right on this out route. So let's talk about that. When he does this crossover move here, he's got great mechanics on the cut, right? It's one, two. Now you see how his toe doesn't open, his toe stays forward. He keeps his weight on the inside part of his foot so he could drive up into the route. There's a lot of speed on that cut and there's a lot of quickness on that cut. And then you see when he gets to the top of the route, he hits this single speed cut. 
He sells with his hips, sells shoulders. He cuts. His toe is forward. His shin angle is slightly inward so he can drive and get out of the break. All of those cuts looked very smooth and looked extremely fast. Now, there are a lot of wide receivers out there that do those good habits. They have the same exact habits that this wide receiver does. They throw that crossover. They're able to be explosive with their cuts. They keep things inside their frame. All of that. But they lack that speed. And it's because they don't do the exercises that they need to improve. Now, are, are Olympic lifts, box jumps, are those the only things that are going to help you get faster? No, 100% no. What will get you faster? Running sprints, right? Running sprints, maybe with some resistance. I, I think running form is great to work on. Running sprints, you should always be mindful of your running form. But there comes a point where you could cap out with that. And again, that's where, you know, running with a sled comes into play, running with a resistance band, running uphill, running bleachers, running stairs. Those things can help you get faster. You got to be mindful of your form when you do it. What's some other things that can help you get faster? I would definitely say stretching. A lot of people lack speed because they're not flexible. They don't have the ability to throw this type of cut with their hips because they're very stiff at their hips. And that will limit your speed because when you're stiff at your hips, you can't open up your stride. So that's something that changed my game a ton is that I was capped out at a 4, four eight forty. For years, I could not get it under 4.8. And that's flat out slow. Like, I'm just going to be honest with you. That's not, that's not fast when you were in high school. That's, that's just like m- maybe average in high school. But I knew I had a better potential than that. I knew I could be faster than that. I knew that wasn't it for me because I wasn't doing the correct things. I always lifted like a bodybuilder, and then I, I never stretched. So was, I worked out with this Olympic gold medalist one time, and he told me, you need to stretch, and you need to stop doing like bodybuilding exercises. You need to start doing explosive movements, power cleans, box jumps, jump squats, those things, lightweight, try to be as explosive as possible. It's going to feel pointless, but you're going to see benefit on the actual field. And when I started doing that, dropped to low four sixes. Swear to God, didn't change a thing with my form, didn't change anything. I just stretched and I did explosive movements. I swear by that because I would do all the sprints, fellas. I would run up hills. I would run with sleds. I would kill myself trying to get that 40 time down. I'd have work on my technique, nothing worked. Those things is are what worked. And that's what made me look fast on film. I could care less about 40 time. I want to look fast on film. So we need to make sure the reason why I show these game examples and the reason why I show the, the, the exercise examples is that's how it translates. That's how you guys can build off the two. So let's play this thing full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver showcasing great cutting mechanics, but understanding fellas that this is not built overnight. This is built from things that you do in the off season, in the gym to get those good habits. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, we are going to be traveling out to 14 more states this offseason for two-day-long QB and wide receiver camps. If you came out to our San Francisco camp, we really appreciate it. We loved having all of you guys out there. That was a great weekend of work. And then we're going to be coming out to Orlando next. That is unfortunately sold out. Next camp available is the Phoenix, Arizona camp we have and the rest on this list. So very first link below if you're interested, fellas. I'll see you guys next time.